how important it is not to quit. And how not to quit. How not to quit. How to make it to the end. <clears throat> so, so I just jotted down a couple of things here. Um, how, to stay, how to stay in the race. How to stay in the race. How to have longevity uh, in really in, in, in ministry or really in anything you do. Thank you. In anything you do. Uh, here, this isn't real complicated. Uh, number one, just don't quit. Yeah, just don't quit. Just don't quit. There are things that we do involuntarily, like don't quit breathing. Well, you, that, that's, that's involuntary. That's involuntary. But forward momentum isn't. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Just keep loving your husband. Just keep loving your wife. Just, just, keep, just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Just keep, just keep getting up every morning and, 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 and saying, doesn't matter if I feel like it, I'm a servant of God. I, I, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christ-like one. And, and, and I just won't quit. I just won't quit. Maybe, maybe I'm just too obstinate to quit. Maybe, maybe I'm like, any of you recognize the name Norval Hayes? Norval would say, ain't got no quitting sense. I just don't have enough sense to quit. Just going to keep on, just going to keep on keeping on, keep on pounding, keep on praying, keep on loving people. Uh, and and just, I just, I just won't quit. Just don't quit. Just don't quit. Don't quit on yourself. Don't quit on your fellow man. Don't quit on your fellow Christians, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, don't, don't quit on the people that you love. Don't quit on the people that you care about. Don't quit on the people that you don't love, which you should anyway, but don't like. Okay? Uh, just don't quit. Just don't quit. Just don't quit. Uh, number two, um, this, this will just kill your Christian life. Don't get offended. Yeah, offense. Uh, be unoffendable. Unoffendable. I had two outstanding opportunities this past week that if I wanted to, I could have taken offense uh, at a couple of things that, uh, that a couple of people uh, had to say to me. Uh, and, and even the way they did it. Oh, have you got a minute? Can you step over here? I, I just, I just want to share something from my heart with you. And, 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 and so I, I did. It, 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 if it came from their heart, their heart's corrupt. Um, because it was critical and, and, and uh, attacking and demeaning. And, and that's all right. You can't offend me. Amen. You can't offend me. You say what you want. When it's all done, uh, I'm going to hug you. Uh, uh, I got down on my knees and said, well, brother, please forgive me. Please forgive me. If, uh, if I did anything that was hurtful or wrong, uh, then if it was a sin, I'll confess it to God. If it was a fault, I'll confess it to you. But either way, please forgive me. To the other, I walked over and shook his hand, and I said, brother, you're my brother. And it doesn't matter to me if we're on the opposite sides of the aisle or the opposite side of the issue. Uh, I'm your Christian brother, and I will always love you, no matter if we see things eye to eye or not, I still love you, and, and I'm for you, and we're not on opposite sides, we're on the same side. And he looked at me and he said, I don't know what to do with that. That's what he said, that was his only words. So I don't care what you do with it, it don't matter to me. I mean, if I give you a hundred dollar bill out of my pocket and you don't know what to do with it, I mean, give it to somebody that does, my wife. See, she'll tithe and then get it in circulation, what's left? <clears throat> now he said, I don't know what to do with it. You don't have to do anything with it, but I have to do it. See, staying, staying out of offense isn't for the other person. It's for you. Offense will hurt you. If you let yourself get offended because somebody didn't return your call or somebody forgot your birthday or, or, or somebody didn't say hi or, or even if you hear they were talking about me, even if you hear you know, that they did something that they shouldn't have been doing. They, they criticized me on Facebook and they didn't think I'd see it, but I saw it. Okay, okay, well, what should I do about it? Don't take offense. Don't get offended over it. Why do you have to do anything about it? Love them. Forgive them. Walk on. Let it run off you like water off a duck. Yeah. You don't have to answer everybody's critique. It's their opinion. Okay. I so bad wanted to take a picture. We were in Lexington, Kentucky, and Lexington, Kentucky is only famous for two things. You know what they are? Horses and what? Bourbon. Bourbon, that's whiskey, I think. I'm not even sure what it is, but, but they got it everywhere. Uh, and, and, and they got horses everywhere. And there was this one picture, all, everything in me wanted to take a picture of it. 
and just keep it on my phone. I can make it, make it my home page on my computer or something and just remind me about all these people criticizing and judging and, 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 and spouting off and giving their opinion and saying what they think and telling you what you are or what you aren't. It was a picture of this horse. <laughs> Not from the front. <laughs> Big old framed print right in the hotel. The tail. All right, if you missed that, that's okay. We'll just go on with church here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I thought that was a great print. <laughs> Paula wouldn't let me bring it home, put it in our house. <laughs> don't get offended, and by all means, by all means, don't get offended at your God. Amen. Oh, people get angry at God because they don't understand him, because they try with that limited finite brain and understanding they can't wrap themselves around or their thoughts around an infinite God they can't they can't somehow somehow understand unlimited wisdom and 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 they have to be able to fit what God doesn't do for them or what God does do for them somehow somehow uh, into they have to frame that somehow into what they can comprehend or understand the God who works all things after the counsel of his own will, who does all things for his own pleasure, who created us because it pleased him, and, and, and who willed that all of us spend eternity in his presence. That's his will. <coughs> and then we see something, and it's not our will. And then we just lose our joy. And, and we treat our God sometimes like people. And I say we, I'm not including you and me, but I'm just, you know, Christian people. Uh, I've seen it my whole life. And then, and then they treat God like they're, like one of their friends in seventh grade. Oh, dear. You know, if you don't, if, if I don't get, or you, you said something about me or you didn't do what I liked or something. So I'm just going to go off here in the corner and pout and not talk to you anymore. Just write you off. You're not hurting God. But boy, it's, it's lethal. Offense is lethal. Number three, don't get tired. Yeah, don't get tired. Don't get tired. If you're going to get tired of anything, get tired of sinning. Get tired of losing your temper and cool. And, 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 and get tired of, of corrupt communication coming out of your mouth. Get tired of being offended. Get to, the, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, don't grow weary in doing well. Don't get tired of doing well, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And so don't get tired. How do you not get tired? There's only two secrets uh, in the Bible about this. One is in Isaiah. You know it really well, Isaiah 40. But they that wait upon the Lord, and see all the previous verses talk about weary and falling out, and even the young men will grow weary and faint, but they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run. They'll not be weary, and they'll walk, and they won't faint. And so waiting on the Lord, that's like the wait staff. That's like the waitress and the waiter. That's taking orders and going and fulfilling and, and, and serving. We call them servants, the serving staff. Serving God. Serving God. I tell you, when you lay down at night, you, you, when you're a servant of God, you are exhausted. But, but he renews your strength. He exchanges that divine exchange of his first. And then the second key there is praying in the spirit. Amen. That's the only way, the only, th only place in the whole Bible that says you edify yourself. He that prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself, builds himself up, recharges himself. Jude verse 20 says, says, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And so it's not a doctrine to be argued it's a great benefit of the spirit-filled Christian life. A great benefit. Number four, first was just don't quit. Second is don't ever take offense. Don't get offended. Third is don't get tired. And the fourth is never get your eyes on people. You'll be disappointed. If, if you want to quit, just look at people. Uh, uh, people just quit in the droves because, because some uh, televangelists uh, fell, fell in the, uh, what was that, maybe in the 1980s. And, and they get their eyes on people. People, I watched them. They got their eyes on one of our Republican presidents. And we had a Republican House of Representatives in the United States. We had a Republican Senate in the United States. We had, the, we had a Republican president in the United States. And we had a majority on the Supreme Court. And they didn't get what they thought 
should, should, should have been gotten. They, 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 didn't, they didn't see all the laws and everything change in, in the two years that that, that took place. Uh, and uh, they quit. And they quit because they had their eyes on people. People will never deliver you. Right. People don't supply your needs according to their riches and glory. People can't heal you. People can't save you. People can't answer your prayers. People can't, can't, can't uh, uh, take care of your children. Uh, people can't manifest peace that surpasses understanding in you. No, no, no. Our Bible says, our Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, therefore being compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with perseverance the race set before us laying aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us, looking unto Jesus. Wow. The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured, endured, endured even the cross, despising the shame, and therefore he sat down at the right hand of God. Consider H-I-M. Consider him who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you become weary and faint in your mind. You keep your eyes on our God. He's never, ever, ever given up on you. He's never, ever, ever not kept his word. He's never lied. He's never cheated you. He's never stolen. He's never had an impure motive or ulterior motive. No, he's never been anything but truly faithful. He loves you with a love that you can't even comprehend or understand. And we're praying constantly, you know, that we'd have that. He's taken care of you. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. Keep your eyes on him. You won't quit. Amen. Keep your eyes on him and, and, and you will not quit. And then lastly, I just wrote down, just decide and commit to be determined to finish. Just decide and commit and covenant and consecrate and be determined to finish. I mean, thank God we got a start. Thank the Lord we got a real good start. And we're somewhere, we're somewhere in the marathon of the Christian life. But just because we, 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 ah, that was a, you know, we had a pretty good run. No, 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 we are determined and, and committed uh, to, to finish our course with joy. Amen. Yeah, that's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, I, I've fought a good fight and I've kept the faith and I've finished my course. Finished my course. Just commit to finish. Commit to finish. Uh, and uh, not, not to, uh, you know, we were, uh, Paula, was, uh, Paula was in a bidding war this past week. The, the auxiliary, all the spouses of these ICPC chaplains, they do a silent auction and they raise money for the organization. And there was one item that she was bidding on. And, and it wasn't for her. It wasn't for herself. Uh, it was an item we want to give to a family. And it will be absolutely priceless to them who lost their son who was a law enforcement officer. And so she was bidding on this. And she bid it. And, she, and somebody else came bid. She bid again. Somebody else came over and wrote their name down. And she bid again. And at one point she came and said, you know, it's getting right up there. And, and I think somebody else really wants it. I looked at her and I said, you did not come here to take second place. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, I have that attitude in, 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 in life. We didn't come here to place. We came here to finish first. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9 says, run to win. Right. Says, run to win. Run to win.